been known for its high production values. Today, though, some adult entertainment has gone high-tech with interactive games. To discuss this evolution, more than 150 leaders in the adult video game industry were in San Francisco last week for the Sex and Video Games Conference. X-rated videos and DVDs, internet porn sites and webcams, the adult entertainment industry has led the way in utilizing new technology. Unsurprisingly, more and more video games are catering to adult players with explicit content. Money is driving the trend. Adult entertainment and video gaming are both $12 billion industries. But what's driving demand? And just what is cyber sex? I'd say defining cyber sex or virtual sex um, is anything to do that pleases you in a sexual manner um, using the internet. Um, whether you're having cyber sex or virtual sex by just you know, texting back and forth, or whether you've got a 3D model in front of you that uh, you know, you're playing with, you're moving your breasts around. Either way, you're, you're being aroused sexually by, by something that's interactive with you online, either by the computer or another person. Virtual Hottie uses haptics that technology is touch. Experts say haptics will revolutionize the computer industry, much the way the talkies revolutionized the film industry. Well, right now we offer, uh, we have a virtual sex machine, where the machine itself is a tube. It's got multiple vibrating modes and suction, and it interacts directly with what you do in the game. If you want to have fun in the game, and you know, you start getting it off with the girl, the machine's going to react the same way. And this is one of the only games out there also that provides uh, almost you know, complete freedom. You can be as, as hardcore, as softcore as you want. You can enjoy yourself. Dave Taylor says some fetishes were created by technology and couldn't exist without technology. He's into EB, or expanding breasts. absolutely patently fascinated with giant and inflating breasts. So you're going to see a lot of them in this presentation. Technology also facilitates uh, sexual fantasy. Right. You're able to get everything you want uh, at the same time out of a linear media like porn. Uh, so I'm going to give an example here, which is uh, you want people to mix and match. So you've got the mountain librarian with whipped cream, good. Okay, French made, double bondage, double good. BDSM, shoe fetish, Asian, triple threat. Okay? Uh, you can mix and match all these things with simulators. You can't mix and match them with porn. You just have to luck out and wait for someone to release the one with the right combination you want. Cybersex is part of the non-X-rated video game world as well. This month, Take-Two Interactive Software settled with the Federal Trade Commission for failing to disclose hidden sex scenes in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, a game known for its crude depiction of violence. And then there are the massively multiplayer online games. World of Warcraft has an estimated 6.5 million players. These gamers are role-playing, questing, and sometimes forming cyber relationships. Andrea Fryer, a pixel artist and MMOG player, spoke at the conference. I mean, people go to these games to play the game, originally the game, and they, they're adventuring, and they're questing, and they're leveling, and uh, people group together, and, you know, um, our personalities are clicked. And then, you know, you, you find a soulmate, somebody who's really, really fun to play with, and then you just start spending more and more time with that person, and you're, you find yourself questing with them alone. And one day, you're, you've just battle to some huge monster and you, you're feeling triumphant with that person and you're jumping up and down for joy and um, savoring that victory together. A lot of times it'll just sort of happen at that kind of moment that uh, the two of you just have that courage to take that, the, the bond that you've been building up for weeks um, one step further and uh, then it just happens that you just start to kiss and do other nice things. <laughs> what, if you, what if you're a single mom like me and you go to work every day and you get your kids home and then you're tired as hell and you're, you just want to sort of collapse uh, against your computer at night and somebody like that, is they're gonna, are they going to start like, hunting for lovers that they're going to bring into their home with their, their children sleeping in the next room? I don't think so. Um, well, at 
least I don't want to introduce that into, into my life um, at least too much. <laughs> fantasy is a positive experience and fantasy and games has the potential to educate users, said some panelists. The thing that I was really thinking about was to let people sort of customize their fantasies when they're in the game as far as high risk behavior and low risk behavior. So I can walk in and in, in, let's say in my real life, um, I would never ever ever have anal sex without a condom with a stranger. But it's something that I've always thought about, you know, saying, wow, you know, that, that would be so cool. I can go into the game and say, I'm a high risk, you know, I want to have a high risk experience. What you're doing is, one, you're being non-judgmental. You're allowing people to do whatever the heck they want in their fantasies, and that's what we want people to do. Fantasy is fantasy. It's beautiful. Um, then you're also educating them about what are high-risk activities in your real life. Okay. But whether all fantasies are healthy is open to debate. And on the conservation side, I mean, there, there are generally two arguments in, in some of the effects to be very, very broad about this. Um, one is that exposure to and engagement interactively with certain things such as violence increases one's propensity to, to be violent. The other is the catharsis angle, which is that we have related to desires, etc. And through acting them out and acting them out in, in safe environments, that's actually better, better for society. And that's the one that I don't think, from the evidential point of view, is really ever going to be won. Although images of simulated children are not currently regulated as child pornography under the law, there are numerous complex ethical questions that still need to be answered. And uh, I think in what we'll see in, in fantasy worlds, it's absolutely inevitable, are creatures who are undeniably, or maybe confusingly, young looking. I mean, uh, E.T., is E.T. young or is he old? So you have a video game with E.T. It raises the question, um, uh, is there a line? What do you do with that? Preventing children from accessing adult content is another priority. A federal law to do that, the Child Online Protection Act, passed in 1998. However, it has been blocked by the courts and has never been enacted. Similar state laws have also been struck down by the courts, based mainly on First Amendment arguments and the Commerce Clause, which says that states can't regulate national and international commerce. In the meantime, the industry should be vigilant in regulating itself, said one panelist. So it is, there are, there are lots of, I think, um, um, potential uh, pitfalls here. And, uh, and I think, I truly think that vigilance in these matters going forward uh, and, 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 and not engaging in any, any form of denial uh, that things aren't going on or that they can't happen and that there are no repercussions or potential liabilities um, is, uh, is very unwise. As for parents, Rin Reynolds had this advice. Also, I think pa parents have an out. They have this technophobia. Oh, it's technology. It's like the video recorder. We don't really know. Well, that's just not good enough. If it's your child, you really should be taking some kind of note of, of what is the content of this. Take it seriously. Play with child. Because video games can be great things. Parents and children's play together mm -hmm. can be absolutely fantastic. And we, we shouldn't lose all the benefits that there are from this for, through ignorance or fear or, or, or bad education.